What can you tell us about the timing of your order on the Holton DA disqualification issue? So I made a promise to everybody. Uh, these kind of orders take time to write. I need to make sure I say exactly what I want to. And I plan to stick to the timeline I, I gave everyone. So this week? Should be out tomorrow. That's Fulton County Superior Court Judge Scott McAfee dropping a major hint that he is just moments away from releasing his order regarding Fulton County District Attorney Phony Willis. You'll recall Donald Trump and his co-defendants in the Georgia criminal RICO case filed a motion to disqualify Phony Willis, alleging a conflict of interest based on a short relationship that she had with a special prosecutor on her team, Nathan Wade. There were multiple days of hearing and closing arguments. We covered it all here on the Midas Touch Network. Some of the uh, questioning and the approach by Trump and his co defendants was nothing short of despicable. The fact that Judge Scott McAfee even allowed this to take place, in my view, was nothing short of despicable. But we are moments away to seeing what Judge Scott McAfee is going to do. That was an exclusive interview with WSB-TV in Atlanta, which is Atlanta Channel 2, a rare interview for Judge Scott McAfee, but a rare interview for any judge to be giving an interview like that, which is kind of strange. But he was at a Rotary Club where WSB-TV Channel 2 caught up with him and asked him that question. So the essential issue that Judge Scott McAfee is going to be ruling on is whether or not Fawny Willis, the Fulton County District Attorney, will be disqualified. This whole effort was started by Trump's co-defendant, Michael Roman, who is represented by Ashley Merchant. You see Ashley Merchant right there. She used to be very close with Nathan Wade. You see her wearing the Nathan Wade shirt right, shirt right there. Um, what seems to have taken place is that uh, Terrence Bradley, Nathan Wade's former business partner and divorce lawyer who had a falling out with Nathan Wade, reached out to Ashley Merchant. They're all part of the same community of uh, Atlanta lawyers, a very tight-knit community there, um, and had told Ashley Merchant some gossip about Nathan Wade uh, and Fulton County District Attorney Phony Willis without real kind of facts and just kind of based on innuendo in text messages, Nathan Wade and Phony Willis said, well, we did have a relationship, but the relationship started in 2022. It did not start at any time before uh, the prosecution of Donald Trump. In any event, what does this have to do with the underlying case? Why are you putting us on trial? We are two adults um, involved in a consensual relationship and we work together. That's something that happens in workplaces across the country, let's face it, you want to say it's potentially an HR issue, which I don't even think it is, go say that. But the ultimate question here is, has the underlying prosecution been tainted by a conflict of interest that is of a material nature to have tainted the whole proceedings requiring either the dismissal of the case and or the removal of the district attorney's office to begin with, because the whole office would have to be uh, disqualified. It's one of the major questions that that, that, that has to be answered. Um, and then secondly, is there any type of perjury that took place? Was anybody lying under penalty of perjury on declarations? Because, look, I don't care what your politics are. If somebody lies in court, there should be serious ramifications of that. But I know you've been following it here on the Midas Touch Network, and courts are not courts of innuendo. Courts are not courts of gossip. Courts are not courts of hearsay. They're courts of evidence. And at least what I watched, there was no admissible evidence that went to the issue of a conflict of interest that would require there to be any type of disqualification. This is what Judge McAfee said at the end of closing arguments. Uh, Judge McAfee said that he would be uh, making a ruling soon. And we now saw from the first clip that I played, that's happening any moment now. It'll happen within hours of this video. Here, play this clip from the last day of the hearings before Judge Scott McAfee. There it is. All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I think it's been very much made clear by the argument and the uh, made today is that there are several legal issues to sort through, several factual determinations that I have to make. Uh, and those are ones I can make at this moment. And so I will be taking uh, the time to make sure that I give this case the full consideration it's due. I hope to have an answer for everyone within the next two weeks. Uh, until that point, um, 
if there are any other issues that come up, council can reach out and uh, we'll have an order posted on the docket. Thank you all. We're off the record. I'll show you this clip right here where Judge Scott McAfee was questioning uh, the lawyers for the defendants, Trump's lawyers and other lawyers for the co-defendants about Terrence Bradley's text messages where Terrence Bradley, again, Nathan Wade's ex-business partner who had reached out to Ashley Merchant and they were communicating um, how when Terrence Bradley took the stand, Terrence Bradley stated that he was unaware of when a relationship between, he had no personal knowledge of when the relationship with Nathan Wade and Fawny Willis began, whether it began before or after. Uh, the case against Trump and Trump's co-defendants was filed and before a grand jury uh, indicted. Um, and one of the things the judge said is that, well, I mean, the text messages, what Judge Scott McAfee said, you know, the text messages that were sent by Bradley to Merchant, I mean, this is not a declaration under penalty of perjury. This is not an affidavit. This seems to be like just people sending messages on text and gossip like, why do you think that this has some evidentiary weight beyond that there are text messages? Here, play this clip. And the truth is in Defense Exhibit 26. And so if we take that view, that he thoroughly impeached himself, that he did not give truthful conduct, uh, you know, what's left standing? Generally, you would see someone who's impeached, perhaps we have some kind of core that you could point back to and say that's the time he was telling the truth. In these text messages, is it ever definitively shown how he knew this and that he actually did know it, other than just a assertion outright, absolutely. Usually, if a state has a witness that goes sideways, they've got him locked in, they've sat down with a detective and got a full statement. We don't have that here. And basically what Trump's lawyer, you'll see him here and what uh, the other co-defendants lawyers were saying, Steve Sada was Trump's lawyer, just trying to cast aspersions on Fawny Willis and mock her and, and behave, I think, entirely inappropriately, like in this clip, play it. No one knew that there was a relationship between Wade and Willis. No one According to Wade and Willis. Not a soul was ever told that they were dating or that there was an intimate relationship. Ever. They concealed it from all parties. From Daddy. Daddy didn't even know they had a relationship. Suggest that somehow in the beginning of uh, 2021, January to uh, whatever it was, in, into April, that they couldn't have met in Hatefield? They didn't meet anywhere that would allow the public to see them. You know, and recently there was uh, a hearing before the Georgia State Senate. Uh, State Senator Harold Jones was questioning Ashley Merchant, Democratic State Senator. Um, and Senator Jones, Georgia State Senator Jones, saying to, to Ashley Merchant, I, I really don't know, what are you arguing the conflict? I think when you see this, you'll see how Trump's and the co-defendants uh, arguments kind of fall apart and how spurious it is when actually questioned by here you'll see state senator howard harold jones get to the heart of it play this clip ubers on each of these trips there was a hotel at the beginning of the royal bahamans i didn't include that i didn't want to do the math and i also did not want to and how much does Ms. willis make um 200 and something thousand a year Two so your, argu my your argument is that a person who makes two hundred thousand dollars a year mm -hmm. is actually setting up prosecutions to go on a trip that costs thirty five hundred dollars. That's your no, argument. No, no, not in isolation. I mean, you're talking about in isolation. No, I'm not talking about in isolation. I'm talking about what's in briefs. I don't know what else you may be speculating about. I'm just talking about what's in briefs that says this is this is the benefit that she got. And all I'm saying is that I that I'm got a person who's making two hundred thousand dollars, and the benefit that you're putting into the briefs, not what you may say that you may find elsewhere, but the benefit in the briefs is. I go on a trip for $3,300, $4,400, and they have made up all these prosecutions to go on a, a three-day cruise for $3,300. I mean, that's your argument. If it, that's no. your argument, that's your argument. That's not. That's in the brief. That's it, And it's that's not our argument. So, it, you know, we did argue for about brief? three hours. What else is in the brief? What else is in the brief? Yes. A lot of facts, a lot of law. No, no, as far as actual financial benefit. 
Oh, all, so so the financial benefit that I put in the brief was what I could prove. I did not want to have any, as you call it, speculation. I did not want to speculate about anything else. So I did not know if Mr. Wade paid for an Uber that Miss Willis was literally sitting in at the same time. And this was uh, Terrence Bradley, the disgruntled ex-business partner of Nathan Wade. But here he testified that he has no knowledge of when the relationship began. Play the clip. So your office objected to us getting um, Delta records for flights that you may have taken when no, Mr. Wade. And, well, no, no, no. Look, I object to you getting records. You've been intrusive into people's personal lives. You're confused. You think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. So my question was- This is when Fulton County District Attorney Phony Willis testified. Play the clip. I'm sorry. I'm gonna direct your attention to 2020. In 2020, were you dating the district attorney? No. 2020, that was during the COVID pandemic, correct? It was. Uh, was there a situation for you, Mr. Wade, that made you particularly uh, vulnerable during the COVID period? Yes, ma'am. And in, in 2020, um, and a portion of 21, I was battling cancer. Um, and that prevented me from pretty much leaving the leaving environments that aren't sterile. And I just, I had health on my mind. You were particularly cautious during that time? Yes, ma'am. Here, Nathan Wade had to testify that uh, because he had cancer in 2020 and 2021, he uh, was not able to be intimate. I mean, this is where this hearing devolved into, play this clip. Willis and Nathan Wade were in a romantic relationship, correct? Correct. And um, it began at the time that they were both municipal court judges, correct? I Objection, Your Honor, based on privilege. That overruled. Would be the okay, overruled. I do not have knowledge of it starting um, or when it started. Um, Terrence, you told me that it started when they were both municipal court judges, though, correct? That is incorrect. Even Fawny Willis's mom, or Fawny Willis's dad, rather, had to testify, play this clip. Well, these um, South Fulton police, first, they put a car in front of the house that was there permanently. Um, a police car. That was thing one. Thing two, they brought a person uh, with a dog sometimes more than uh, once a day, twice a day, and they would circle the house to look for, for bombs. Um, I knew that that was a house that my daughter had worked for, for. It was a brand new house. She's the only one who had ever lived there. It's a four bedroom, brand new house. And I wanted to, somebody needed to protect the house. And I stayed there to basically take care of the house, uh, to take care of the yard, to take care of that. Also, somebody sprayed, um, um, again, the B word and the N word on the house. And uh, I don't think my daughter even knew that. Uh, I cleaned it off and called the police and South uh, Fulton police. They have, I'm sure, all the records of all the things that happened. And all of the neighbors, uh, I notified all the neighbors to look out and to watch out. And it was just, it was so crazy. I mean, it was just so crazy. We'd have people would show up in, in park car. There was a guy parked for probably eight hours out in front of the, the house. Uh, you know, it was just, and we'd call the police and, you know. You know, I think about her having her dad having to testify how, um, despicable. I mean, this whole thing is. So we're moments away. You, you heard Judge Scott McAfee say that uh, at the Rotary Club in that interview with uh, Atlanta Channel 2. Um, we'll, as soon as the order happens, we'll let you know what's up. I'm Ben Micellis. This is the Midas Touch Network. Hit subscribe. Let's get to 3 million subs together. Thanks for watching. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.